So halozoism is a lovely word from the ancient Greek, which means life coming out of material. And it's a concept that perhaps each of us have had an experience of when we were children, debating whether rocks are alive or not. In this project, halozoism is quite specific. That is, we are working with subtle materials and electricity and chemistry, weaving together interactions that at first create a responsive architecture that simulates life. But increasingly, these interactions are starting to act like life, like some of the ingredients of life. Certainly in the chemical interactions that we're working with here, we are working with wet chemistries that are showing catalytic loops that are starting to generate new forms of artificial life. But this, pro this project starts with a very simple, primitive kind of architecture. That is, a responsive architecture which makes space, which weaves space together with hyperbolic meshworks. The kind of meshworks that we see stretching around here, unclothed, without the mechanisms, are a kind of a geotextile, that is, a landscape reinforcement that makes a fundament, a kind of a new terrain, which is a basic kind of architecture the act of creating the earth itself and of folding it together into a terrain that all of us can meet on and be sheltered by. This meshwork then is clothed with arrays of mechanisms which work in subtle ways in order to allow the entire environment to start to breathe and shift and move in relationship to us. It's then further clothed in arrays of microprocessors that invest this environment with intelligence, with an insect-like intelligence that en en enables the environment to work like a coral reef or a great swarm. Very primitive, sometimes stuttering, sometimes hiccuping, sometimes convulsive kinds of primitive intelligence. And then, in the latest development of, of this work, beyond the interactive systems and the kinesis that we've invested this work with, and the simple swarm-like crowd intelligence, now we're investing the work with a wet chemistry system, which works a bit like the lymphatic system of your own body or the circulation system, which gathers in toxins and converts them into harmless substances like limestones and carbonates. These layers then, the meshwork, the structure, the kinetic environment, the muscles, the neurons, and the intelligence, the memory, and then the active circulation system is working in a comprehensive way in order to create a responsive architectural system. And if we compress all this together, perhaps if we imagine these diffuse clouds of material compressed into a layer, a composite layer, and perhaps turn it sideways, then we'd have a breathing wall, an architecture, a literal built architecture of the future, which could transfer materials through, which could be active, actively filtering the environment, and which could serve as a kind of shelter. So when I say that, I, I tr make the claim that this architecture is practical and is devoted to being built. At the same time, this architecture has surreal almost delirious qualities to it because it's so very immersive that it touches the very edges of experience when we're inside it. And so this work is also a work of the imagination and of the psyche, of asking about possibilities. The possibilities of, can an architecture live? Could it respond to us? Could it know we're here? Could it care? And so these possibilities are about hope and perhaps even optimism as well as being utterly practical.